What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Ogre Battle 64. Today we, uh... Everyone gets to their destination, and we also finish things off here in Wentness, and... Uh, well, I want, not Magnus, I want Ankaseth to be the first one to reach Baldwin here, so I'm actually going to have Magnus stay put for a split second and then continue following. I feel like Magnus tends to move faster than other guys. It just always seems to be the case that he is just a little bit faster than everyone else. Maybe I'm imagining things, maybe not. I'm pretty sure you were fighting for the prince. Well, there's that. Doesn't that fall under the classification of the Revolutionary Army? That's uh, quite the sword you got there. It doesn't seem the best design for a piercing sword. It, uh, it looks like it would just kind of crumple the second you tried to stick it in someone. At least I'm assuming it's a piercing weapon based on the stance he's using with it. I don't actually expect Ankaseth to kill an anyone uh, or uh, to kill Baldwin in this fight, particularly because his orders are autonomous so he just kind of shoots things at random. I just wanted him to fight Baldwin first just because of that extra dialogue that he gets there. Yeah, you show that Knight Templar who's boss, Angaseth. Wow. Uh, I'm pretty sure Angus has just straight up lost that fight. He didn't really do too well for himself, but hopefully Magnus can show him how it's done. Oh god, frickin' healing items. And another scene! What's that supposed to mean? I don't care about you, Mule. I'm just here to kill you. No! <laughs> and die! Well, if any luck, it shall be you who dies here today, Baldwin. See, Angaseth, this is how you do it. When you attack the leader, he tends to die. Well, when once I actually get the chance to. There we go, that's more like it. Like, Magnus's unit was practically half dead before even engaged, and he still managed to seal the deal. And he just conveniently teleports away. Just like all the good villains. It seems to really be an occurring theme in this, the, these types of games. The, the bad guys all have a convenient method of teleporting away. And for beating him, we get a Goblet of Destiny, which uh, is an item which has a chance of improving your character's luck. It also has a chance of either doing nothing or decreasing your luck, so there's that. I said we're leaving! When did that happen? Um, hey Mary, uh, what are you, what are you doing? 
What are you gonna do? Calignus Order? What the heck is that? Well, where did that come from? When did she learn Dark Quest? Let's go together! Oh, dodged it. She might be good at magic, but uh, she's rather susceptible to the bitch slap, apparently. Interesting how. I suppose we'll find out eventually. Seems there's a much bigger scheme going on than we've been able, uh, subject to so far. Dude, he's not there. The way Magnus and Yumil talk to each other when they're not actually there makes me wonder if like they can like speak telepathically or something. Of course that's not the case. If that was, things would be very different, but you know, whatever. Yumil! Is it just me or do do the eyes on a sprite like a uh, in the actual game world, not his portrait, of course. Look almost like the, uh... I don't know what you would call them. One of those, like, happy face emoticon things. Like, they, they look like they're the, the, the upwards pointy, like the upside down V things. I'm not sure what those things are actually called. Sorry. It just seems rather inappropriate face to be having. Well, I guess we killed the Western Division. That's one guy, one one side that we're now protected on. It's convenient that uh, not, none of the other regions decide to attack while we were dealing with the Western Division. Um, how does that make sense? So yeah, Mount Cariolith, Azure Plains, and Wetness, they're all gone. We, we kind of withdrew, so, yeah. Didn't we already have it? Hey look, this is Frederick. Oh, well that's handy. Bolster the ranks a little bit. All these little scenes that they're showing and then like going into grayscale, they don't really make a whole lot of sense, but whatever. Well, surely that'll never come into play. And so begins chapter three. Time passes if their backs break under their burdens. As always, I'm not quite sure what exactly that is supposed to mean, but it sounds cool, I guess, kind of. It's the king! Does what exist? Retinue? Ancient sacred script, huh? Is 
So they're looking for the Temple of Birth? Why? What is that? How does the church keep a temple? Is it like hidden away somewhere inside the church or something? Procus seems a little impatient. Ultimate power. Well, it's kind of hard if you can't find the Temple of Birth, isn't it? It seems like the royalty is plotting something. Hey look, it's Baldwin! And some dude in a fur coat. Sir Richard. He does look like a Richard. Were you plotting something behind my back? It's kind of strange. Why, 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 bleh, I can't talk. It's very strange how... I, I don't quite understand why Lotus would have so much control over Palatinus. Any questions? I don't care because you're not autonomous anymore! Bargain. Huh? I guess there are a lot of like evil things going on, so I guess if Lotus is supposed to be like a religious order, then I guess that sort of makes sense. Well, that that went well. was a rather foolish thing to do. Pruffless? Who's Pruffless? That's a very harsh line to take. I don't know, I mean Baldwin seems to be doing a, a decent job anyways, I mean... Were we even fighting against Lotus in uh, Winnia? Or not Winnia, Wentness? I thought the church was staying neutral though. That seems a more logical stance than this dude. Zephika is just such a warmonger. Well, I mean, even if if not that, I mean, I would think that they would at least be like lesser organized and stuff.
I, I'm the captain or whatever my position is. I can do whatever I want, dude. Speaking of... What's the difference? Now what? Well, that's... that's not good. I guess they've, uh, forced our hand. So, now what? Yeah, Zevik's a bit of a jerk. I don't care about no stinking army. I just want to fight by my little son. Hmm. I'm fairly certain we want to say number one. Very well, you've convinced me. And by, uh, by doing so, we have, uh, recruited Ankasath officially. Um, Lotus? Yeah, so Lotus is just trying to stamp us out. And with that, I leave you here for today on Let's Play Ogre Battle 64. Catch you later!